News at Noon begins now. The measles outbreak continues to grow at this hour. We will have the latest numbers and how far it has spread. An animal clinic in Kalispell just shared an amazing story of survival. A cat used up quite a few lives. Women are four times more likely to get this, and it is not uncommon during this time of year. We are telling you all about the impact winter can have on your mental health. Plus the sunny skies that you're seeing out live downtown right now, well, they'll be replaced with plenty of snow that is on the way for your weekend. We're talking about just how much to expect coming up. Well, thanks so much for being with us here on Creme 2 News at Noon. I'm Jen York. Hi, everyone. I'm Laura Papetti. Well, we are really feeling the winter weather this week, and we are preparing for a storm heading our way. And, of course, mm -hmm. Evan's been talking about that. He is tracking everything we need to know to prepare when that snow hits. Evan? Yeah, and uh, going into this afternoon, we started getting some numbers in that I, I would say it would lead us to believe that this could be the most significant snowfall that we've seen of the season so far because we've had a very mild winter. Anytime anyone who's been around for multiple Spokane uh, winters knows that this last few months we've had very little snowfall. The highest accumulating snow in a single day has been just under three inches, so uh, per, very, very light in general. Now what we see outside is going to be a very different situation about 24 hours or just beyond 24 hours from now. One of the reasons for that is just because of how cold it is outside. Take a look at your current temperatures. We've got 19 degrees in Spokane, 22 in Coeur d'Alene, 13 in Mazama, and 19 in Ritzville. Outside, no stormy weather right now, just a little bit of cloud cover. But look what we have in anticipation for tomorrow. A winter storm watch is in effect for Spokane and most of North Idaho into western Montana. This will likely be upgraded to a winter storm warning or a winter weather advisory uh, as we go towards tomorrow. But for now, we're only dealing with dry skies. Now, clouds are going to build going into your evening hours. Temperatures are going to be making their way up to 25 and then dropping down uh, to the lower 20s into the overnight hours. But here's what we're talking about. That next major storm bringing hazardous travel conditions, gusty winds, and possibly the highest accumulations that we've seen uh, this winter. 10 inches are possible across central Washington. That goes for Omak, Wenatchee, uh, even into portions of Moses Lake. And that is going to begin Friday night and continue into Saturday night. Coming up, we're talking about how much to expect throughout Spokane and Coeur d'Alene and the rest of North Idaho, because a lot of these uh, estimates of just how much snow to expect uh, are different depending on where you are in the Northwest. So we'll throw that map up coming up in just a bit. All right, my friend, thank you. It is 12.02 right now. Classes resumed on schedule today at Central Washington University, and this was following a report of an active shooter. It turned out it was a false alarm here. The campus was locked down for an hour and a half last night while police responded. Now, it started around 7, and the school quickly alerted students. Officers searched the campus but determined there was no shooter. They say there were no shots fired and no one was hurt. Now, it's still unclear what initially sparked that call and the subsequent investigation. Inmates at the Coyote Ridge Correction Center, this is in Connell, are staging a hunger strike. They want hot meals for breakfast. Right now, inmates get breakfast that include oatmeal, muffins, bread, and other cold items. The hunger strike started last Friday. There was one day during the strike only 262 of the 2,000 inmates ate lunch. The hunger strike has not been violent thus far. However, the prison has brought in more staff to help out just in case. Washington Governor Jay Inslee has proposed more funding in the next budget for hot and healthier food options for the prisoners, but that remains to be seen. Well, the measles outbreak in the Northwest is still growing. There are now 55 confirmed cases. A new case in Clark County brings the total number there to 50. Another person in the Seattle area contracted the measles along with four others in Oregon. Well, spring is still about a month and a half away. Summer is even further out than that. Doesn't mean people aren't dreaming about it mm -hmm. already. Uh, many of you probably thinking the warmer weather cannot get here soon enough. We know that some people love to ski and love the cold, but we're hearing a lot of folks would really like the sunshine to come uh, with uh, warmer temperatures. For some of you, your mental health may even be impacted during this time of year. Creme 2's Kara Elfallen telling us about seasonal affective disorder. 
Yes, well, for me, single digit temperatures are just cold and a little uncomfortable, but for some of you at home, winter may be enough to keep you from getting out of bed in the morning. Seasonal affective disorder is very real, and it's a form of depression that typically starts in the fall or early winter going away around springtime. You may be thinking, hey, this could be me, but to be diagnosed with SAD, there's a list of symptoms that fall in line with major signs of depression. According to the National Institute of Mental Health, some of these symptoms include feeling depressed, most of the day or every single day, feeling hopeless or worthless, having low energy or losing interest in activities you normally like, and the list goes on. There are also symptoms that are more specific to winter seasonal affective disorder, including having low energy, hyperinsomnia or excessive sleepiness, overeating, weight gain, and social withdrawal. Women are also four times more likely to be diagnosed with SAD, along with people who have a history of depression in their family. Now, there are many forms of treatment for seasonal affective disorder. Disorder. So if there's something that you feel like you have, you should definitely go in and consult with your doctor. We also have more information on creme.com if you're more interested in learning about uh, this form of depression in general. And hopefully we can all uh, just hold on to the fact that we're about six weeks away from spring. I'll send it back to you in the studio. All right. Thank you very much. I know it was something uh, at home in Alaska a lot of people deal with. Mm -hmm. People deal with it all over any cold weather states. It's it's tough. Yeah, and it's shining a, a light on that. Someone out there may be saying, why am I feeling like this? Yeah. Well, get it checked out. Absolutely. All right. It is 12.06 right now. One Kalispell cat tested out its nine lives all in one time. Yeah, check it out. Someone found Fluffy here nearly dead with giant snowballs covering her body. They found her, took her to a local veterinarian. Experts say she was basically frozen and unresponsive, oh. but they were able to put her on a heating pad and help to warm her up. After several hours, veterinarians say she was back to normal and they were able, this is the good part, they were able to track down and return her to her family. Yeah, apparently they were missing her and, yeah, and wanted her. If yeah, you saw bad. that in the snow, you might just think it's dirt. You wouldn't be able to really tell it's Or a that cat, she was so. already gone because she yeah. was very unresponsive. Yeah. So well done to the person who found her. All right, at 12.07 right now, uh, talking about warming up, keeping warm. Well, we're warming up here at the Creme 2 studio today. All day long, we've been celebrating what we call warm-up winter, setting our sights on summer, even if it's a little ways away.